If you have an individual who has been diagnosed with homozygous familial hypercholesterolemia, many patients will have heart attacks under the age of 10. The statistics were very daunting to think about. It's like, okay, you know, am I gonna even have him for another 10 years? The fear of, of living with this disease, you know, heart attack and stroke and all those things, it weighs on you. I found out at the age of two that I had this rare disease. I was playing with my brothers at my grandmother's house and my grandmother noticed some orange spots on my hands and wrists. Two or three weeks later, we made an appointment with the dermatologist and went in and they thought it was too much carotene in my diet, so sent me home, no carrots, no nothing orange. So about two months later, went back for because they hadn't gone away, and did a lipid panel and found that my cholesterol levels were higher than normal, around 950. I remember being younger and I would just fall apart and, you know, talking to my brothers or because I wanted, there was so much I wanted to do in life and I felt that I'm gonna be cut short because of this disease. When he was little, the challenge was why? Why him? You know, why us? Why, why everything? And also back then was finding somebody to talk to about it that would even begin to understand. Or even finding a doctor that knew about it so it's been a, a lonely journey. The hardest thing was the xanthomas. The xanthomas were orange bumps uh, all over my skin, my knuckles, my wrists, the webs of my fingers, my elbows, and the inside of my mouth, my feet, everywhere. It, I, you couldn't escape it. I remember being younger and I'd have my mom put makeup on my skin so to cover it up. The worst part with the kids is they saw the really big xanthomas on my elbows. And for them to see those, they were like, what is wrong with you? And I was like, well, it's a disease I have. You won't catch it, I promise. Please don't think you'll catch it. And they're just like, oh man, go away. Don't be near me. I'm like, oh man, if you guys just got to know me, to see who I really am, you got, mm, you're missing out on a good friend, I promise. It was a long road and, and him going to school and, and those times, but it's created what he is and who he is. Christian's figured out, and I, I love it about him, that he can see somebody and it doesn't matter what they look like. I make short-term goals for myself. If we're at Thanksgiving, it'll be to make it to the Christmas time. If we're at Christmas, it'll be make it to Easter. So just little steps, but I think that motivates me to keep going, to keep fighting and keep pushing forward because I know this is the point I want to make it to. When I was a senior in high school, that first day of school, I was like, I am gonna make it to my graduation. There's no question, I'm not gonna be there as no angel. It was my mother's 80th birthday and we were all out to dinner and he gave me a call and as soon as I heard Christian's voice I knew that something was up. We got the news that three of his arteries were over 70% blocked, one of them in two places. So four different places they were 70% blocked and a 19 year old to have to hear that news shook everybody's world. Once Christian found out that news, he kind of took things into his own hands and decided he wasn't going to be the victim anymore of what was going on. I'm his ally. I'm there for him whether things 
happen the way that we want them to or if they don't happen the way we want them to. But most importantly, I do have insights into certain kinds of treatments that should help him effectively over time. I will give him access to the newest research as soon as it becomes available because I'm involved in it. And I will do everything I possibly can to make sure that he understands that the most effective form of treatment for this problem is continued follow-up and partnership with an expert in lipid disorders. I thought when I got that news about my heart disease, it was over. <sighs> was I wrong? I was so wrong. I went, I went from being at the lowest point to then skyrocketing and being able to accomplish some of my goals and I'm gonna accomplish more. Educating people about this disease is now my goal. It's important because since there are so few people like me out there, for the ones that there are out there, they need to know, they need to have someone to talk to. For people that are younger, or six years old, 10 years old, that are going through what I have gone through already, to say, he's been through it, I'm gonna talk to him about it. Christian is remarkable. He's gone past the step of acceptance. He's gone into the step of of actually wanting to help others to better understand what this disease process is about and to do what is possible to help others. That is probably one of the highest levels that any patient with any problem can achieve because the most important thing in life in the end is not so much the disease that you have, but how you deal with it. When I talk to doctors and they say, you know, we're coming up with this new thing, we, we got this new idea, it's like, Okay, this could be it. This, it really gets me energized. And that's where my hope comes from, is the fact that there's something, there's something gonna come out, and it's gonna come out in my lifetime, and it's gonna come out soon, and I'm gonna be the first one to do it. And I'm gonna take care of this disease, and I'm gonna live my life to the fullest.